All right. Welcome, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today. We really appreciate your time. I know a few of you have specific questions. Um, feel free to drop questions in the chat at any time. I know that um, Keely will be adding some links that may answer some of your questions as we go along here. Um, but if you want to have a dialogue conversation, um, please hold those questions for the end. Um, we'll have plenty of time to discuss things. Um, and with that said, um, so this is Engaging Communities. It's meant to be an introduction to community engagement. It is um, an overview. Community engagement is something you can take an entire graduate level course on. So um, just please uh, bear in mind that this is meant to be a sort of a high level overview and very introductory. A lot of you in this room will hold more wisdom about community engagement than I am able to impart on you, but I'm really glad that you're here with us and hopefully you can share things with the group as well. I'll take a minute to introduce myself. I'm Nick Allen. I'm the Northeast Regional Coordinator for Clean Energy Resource Teams. I serve essentially the Arrowhead region of the Northeast part of our state. And um, I don't think we're gonna do intros for the other staff members here today, but we have uh, several other CERT staff joining as well who can answer some questions for you probably mostly in the chat. All right, for the purposes of this meeting, what is community engagement? Essentially, we seek to better engage community um, to achieve long-term and sustainable outcomes, um, relationships, discourse, and decision-making, and implementation that involves the whole community. Community engagement seeks out and facilitates the involvement of those potentially affected by or interested in a decision. So not just the people who are interested, but also the people who may be impacted by the decisions that we're making when we're working on a project or program. And a pretty simple question, how do we define community? Um, community is a broad term. It's used to define groups of people. Community might be a geographic location. Like I, I often say I'm from the Iron Range or the Arrowhead of Minnesota. Also, I'm from Minnesota. Um, it might be a community of similar interest, like a community of practice, a group of nurses or lawyers or farmers. Um, a community can also be an affiliation or an identity such as a religion, maybe a sexual identity, et cetera. Um, and welcome to those who are joining. Please feel free to introduce yourselves in the, the chat. You have not, um, you haven't missed a whole lot. We've just defined community and we're gonna keep going. So um, right now is a chance for you to interact um, in the chat. If you don't mind dropping communities that you belong to, I'll just say mine. So we save time for me typing away here. But like I said, I uh, one of my communities is that I live on the Iron Range. Uh, a community that I belong to is my um, volunteer group. I volunteer with a group of people on the Iron Range, sort of in lieu of a church, because my town only has 300 people. We do not have a church. Uh, other communities that I belong to are the University of Minnesota um, and clean energy resource teams in specific. What communities do you belong to? And then Maggie or Keely, will you read out some of the things that are being dropped in chat? Sure thing, I would be happy to, since Keely is more the brains behind the operation of answering the questions, I will read them out aloud because I can read. So far we have North Minneapolis. Somebody works for Friends of the Environment of Lakeville, which is in the Southern Metro. Oh, and you're muted, Maggie. Thanks, Nick. Of course I am. Uh, Christine, uh, we have someone from the Hometown Resilience Foundation and from the community of Deer River. Good to see you again, Christina. So you get kind of an idea. Um, communities are uh, expansive. There are lots of ways that you can belong to community and you usually belong to many communities simultaneously. So here are the three C's of community engagement. Um, they're pretty simple, communication, collaboration, and connection. When we talk about communication, we mean things that you interact with, like probably every single day, um, email, newsletters, calls, texts, your events calendar. If you're like me, you live by your Google calendar, 
Um, Zoom is another method of communication that we're doing right now. Um, and then of course, engagement is where we're really talking about collaboration. Engagement is a two-way street. So collaboration means shared decision-making, a distribution of tasks, um, especially when you're a community leader, it is very easy to say, I'm gonna do all of these things for you, the community, and that is not great engagement. We, we don't want to take on all of those things ourselves. Um, people really have better buy-in and ownership over things that they get to participate in. So if they're doing many of the tasks as well, um, it's more of an equal partnership. Um, things like surveys, making sure that community um, have a chance to input their, their thoughts on things that you're up to in their space. Um, storytelling, telling uh, the great things that people are up to. This is something that CERTS does really well. Um, I can't take any credit for it. We have wonderful storytellers working for CERTS and they tell the stories of things that all of you are doing, installing solar, putting up wind, um, working on air source heat pumps, et cetera. Um, we frequently tell stories about the actual human beings and the people and things that are impacted by those those good works that they're up to. And um, the final C is connection. It is not community engagement to just send out marketing and forget about folks. We want to really make sure that we're fostering relationship building, authentic professional relationships. Um, you can do this through membership. Um, and recognition. So that's, like I just said, storytelling is one way to do that. You could give out an award at the end of the year. You could make sure that you send a personalized card letting a community member that you really appreciate their work and so on. So um, Zoom covers part of these slides for me, so I can't see, there we go. We'll talk today about the five pillars of community engagement. So the first one is knowing your audience. Who within the community do you want to engage with and why? Um, you really want to know this before you start a big campaign. You can't be an afterthought. Who makes up that community? What are the characteristics that that community shares? Are they all neighbors? Are they all members of a, a certain club? Um, hopefully, when you're doing this work, they're all interested in some way in clean energy. Um, and what is the history of that community? Recognizing that we're outsiders to a community that we're trying to engage is very important. Um, there can be complicated histories. There, You never want to go in thinking that you have all the answers because we just don't. We never have all the answers, right? You want to make sure that community is giving you some of those answers. The second pillar is the why before the what. So this is where our Zoom meetings, our conversations within our own groups come in really handy. This is a very important step. People really need to understand why a project is happening and how it will impact them before they can really take in like the details of what you're up to. So you wanna start with that. Like if you are hoping to build some clean energy project, you wanna make sure that that community knows that this will lower your bills or lower the emissions in your neighborhood or whatever the goal is. You really want to champion that before you can really ask them to be a participant in it. Um, why do you need or want people to get involved in your project? I'm hoping that it's so it's authentic and you're not giving people things that they're not looking for, but there are other reasons that you might want them to be involved. Um, you may need a whole bunch of people to sign off on something before you can get it built. You might want them to help you collect donations or find an electrician, et cetera. Um, and what do you want to get accomplished by getting those folks involved? Know these things first. So when you're planning your community project, your engagement, you want to have some idea what you're up to. And let me just take a drink out of my October themed cup here. Um, we've got to build trust. Um, this is what I'm talking about when I say that it is an authentic relationship. We don't want it to be transactional. Like I come into your community, you sign this thing for me, I get to build whatever I'm trying to build. This is a meaningful relationship with your community. This may be an ongoing thing that you're doing for years. So you want to make sure that that is a, a meaningful relationship that you're forging in the community. We partner with leaders and organizations that community members know and trust to facilitate information 
um, information sharing and provide insights and feedback on that project. So if there are other groups working on the same sort of thing as you, you can partner with certs, you can partner with lots of organizations to accomplish what you're looking for, but you want to make sure that those are trusted leaders in your community. Many communities have experiences that lead them to believe promises won't be met or that they won't actually be listened to. There's a history of some communities being left behind, especially when we're talking about clean energy um, or financial incentives behind things. So we just want to make sure that we're aware of those uh, misgivings and um, and and working through them and, and validating them when people say that, you know, I don't know if you're going to actually come through on that promise. You want to make sure that you're like, I understand that you might feel that way, um, but we're going to work together on this to make it happen. The fourth pillar is to look for gaps. So who, what haven't we heard? Who haven't we heard from? And what misconceptions or misinformation are we hearing? Uh, in clean energy, we often hear, specifically, we could say that a lot of folks think that solar won't work in cold climates. So we can talk to them about all of the great um, technical innovations that have happened in the last 20 years or so that mean that solar actually does work pretty well here. Uh, maybe not as well as in Arizona, but certainly you can power a lot of things with solar here. So making sure that those those folks are also at the table that maybe have have heard some misinformation um, and people who haven't traditionally been listened to. Invite them to your community meetings. Go out and seek them. Share a meal and listen to them. Um, and then we just have a, a little friends joke here that flexibility is key. If something isn't working, reevaluate your plan and messaging. Make space for communities. In other words, pivot. You might It might not look the same way um, coming out of the gate it is, as it will once you're you're really working on it. And the fifth pillar is to continue a two-way dialogue. Um, I mentioned this earlier that community engagement is only successful if parties are community, communicating to each other. So this is in both directions. Sending out a newsletter is only so helpful if you're not also survey, surveying community members, inviting them to conversations, listening to their um, needs, concerns, curiosities. Um, so you want to make sure that you've got a lot of, of methods for them to, to listen to you. Of course, one-on-one -on -one is always great. You might not always be able to chat with them one-on-one. -on -one, so sending out a mailer survey, an email survey, a, a doodle poll, et cetera, just to make sure that you're not talking at them, but you're talking with them. So this is another opportunity to chat. Um, we can, I think at this point, if you'd like to, yeah, if you'd like to unmute and um, jump in, you certainly can, but I'd love to know what people think successful community engagement looks like to you. If you're shy, I'll just keep talking, but um, I'm sure folks have some thoughts here on what um, successful community engagement looks uh, like. I think successful engagement would be um, having events where people show up. Yeah, that's definitely a big part of it. We know the meetings in the chat. Go, go ahead, Keely. I was just going to say um, we know um, in Minnesota how to get them to show up. We we bring food, right? That's a great great way to get them to show up. Please go ahead though. That's how you get me out of that food. <laughs> <laughs> um, we got ongoing conversations and authentic. Connections and ongoing relationships. Yeah, that's um, those are some really great responses. I appreciate um, if you were able to join in. Um, authenticity is a huge like a key word here, right? We we don't want to, this, it can't just be one off. We're making a huge energy transition in Minnesota, um, probably the largest one we've seen um, in our lifetimes. So it's gonna be an ongoing process. So we want that to be an authentic, real thing. Um, it may take us some time. So those relationships are key. And um, if no one has anything else that they'd like to mention about community engagement, um, we'll just move on to questions. And um, if you're more comfortable with chat, chat is great. Um, Keely or Maggie will make sure that we get to them. 
And um, but you're welcome to unmute and ask questions here as well. I'll answer a question that someone had right at the beginning. Um, you mentioned that you were interested in learning more about the actual incentives. So I um, I will implore you to um, check out, I, I think it's the recording is available, um, but I know that Pete will also be hosting the session again. Um, it's called Pay For Your Projects. So that he really dives a little deeper into the ins and outs of some of the financial incentives when it comes to, I think you mentioned solar installation, but um, at any rate, that pay for your projects. Um, of course, our website has so many answers. You can spend several hours um, flipping through there for resources. And they we have a resource specifically for business. But hopefully that will give you some direction. I'm wondering if anybody has any really great ideas on how to advertise a community engagement event um, if they're finding that social media is the best or the local newspaper or how, how they get the word out the best. Uh, I'm sure um, our participants probably have some really great ideas. So please feel free to jump in. I'll give you uh, my take. Um, in our region, I would say Hometown Focus gives me some of the best turnouts anytime I post use it um, because it's free. Uh, so people don't have to pay for it like a regular paper. And also if it's a community event, what you post is free. So um, so that's one. And I also think, um, I think it kind of doing it from all directions. So something in the paper or the hometown focus and also on social media. Um, and when you're posting on social media, make sure that you post it several times. You can set that in meta where it will post like to Instagram, to Facebook, and then put it on a calendar. Because if you're anything like me, you forget that that thing is happening. So you want those reminders to pop up a few times for people. Do it. Does anyone else have thoughts on the best ways to advertise? This is Maggie from CERTS, and uh, this is something that I would... Corey, were you going to say something, and then I can let you jump in? I was going to ask a, que a different question. You can finish this one. Okay, cool. Sorry. Um, Christina, this is something I've been thinking about, and I feel like, hmm, it, this post-COVID -po world is different. Um, from my perspective, it feels like it sometimes it's more difficult to get people to in-person events than it used to be, which is making me go, all right, let's, let's, let's think here. Um, I think so much of it is who do you want there? And what do they use? And I've been thinking, you know, like, do we need to do a survey? I need to talk to people, et cetera. But I imagine that, you know, for your community, it's going to be very different than Minneapolis, for example. You know what I mean? And so I've been thinking like, okay, we need to just talk more to the people we actually want there and ask them, where do you hear about events? What gets you to an event? Um, that's my thoughts currently. And then, um, Corey, did you want to jump in with your question? Yeah, um, I'd say also on that note, um, like like minded groups are good allies, you know, like whatever you're trying to promote, you can contact them because they probably already have a list of followers or subscribers. Um, my question was the community energy ambassador program uh, i thought is there a training or um, tell me more about that yeah there absolutely is so this webinar is one of those um trainings so we're still sort of rolling them out um but several of them have already been recorded and are available on our website it's kind of um uh uh self-led. So you sign up on our website, you'll get a newsletter um, that is just for ambassadors in addition to our um, certs as normal um, newsletter. But you also then you take yourself through these courses. So it's uh, webinar led. And then I think a few of them include some reading material and of course our website. And we're hoping to add some some projects 
at the end. So uh, you would you would guide yourself through an initial project for you. I imagine that would be a solar install or something similar, but um, it, it is um, highly self-guided if that, does that answer your question? And, and there's other folks here who can answer the question better than I can too. Okay. I'm really curious. I saw that after you go through the trainings, um, there's supposed to be a checklist that you go through. Um, and once you've completed the checklist, then you get to see if your project is eligible. But I haven't found any information on the website. Once you get to that phase where you're ready to fill out the checklist, where's the checklist? I can chime in a little bit there. Um, we're still working on a process to do that. Um, and that should be up soon-ish. Um, but we're hoping to do kind of like a pre-learning survey um, to get people excited about um, learning new things and kind of seeing where people are starting in their journey. And then we'll have, you'll kind of go through the list of things and the checklist might be more of like a, here's a guideline of, um, you know, do this training and then this one and then this one. Um, you could always do it however you see it fit in your um, area of work um, or what kind of projects you want to work on. And then um, we're going to roll out some ideas for projects and then um, have a separate area for that, but um, still in working progress. Do you have any idea of the timeline when someone may actually be able to be certified? Um, that's a great question. Yeah, I think we haven't had a whole lot of push yet um, with people who are doing the trainings on like, okay, I've done the trainings, I'm ready to do the project. Um, once we get more of a push for that, we'll probably speed it up a little bit, I want to say in the next couple months, um, but that's still TBD and keep an eye on our um, ambassador newsletter. Um, any updates will be sent through that as well. And there should be one coming out this week. And so we can mention some of those updates for you. Christina, this is Joel with certs. I love your uh, your excitement about this. And, you know, as you can imagine, the whole, some of the piece of the puzzle is we want to make this informative and educational for folks. So they are learning along and it's it's useful to them. But I love the back end piece that you're asking about, which at the end of the day, we're hoping that of these, you know, we have over a thousand ambassadors now. We're trying to figure out a way that they can kind of easily track and learn from each other. Like, what are some projects that you're working on now? And how can you uh, sort of take credit for them or show people what you're, what you're doing? But how to track that, how to make it user-friendly, how to make it not too onerous. You know, we're, we're kind of testing different systems of how to do that. And it's for for me anyway. I'll just speak for myself. It, it could be a trickier situation than than expected. But um, I love, and I'm I'm I you know I'm looking at your website right now. The work you're doing in Deer River. So I mean, this kind of thing is exactly what we're looking for. The folks that Equilibrium Three are doing in Lincoln Park is how can we all work together and uh, get projects done in our communities. And I think one of Christine's ideas will actually be something that we at least test out um, as a method for ambassadors to keep in touch. We're, we're looking at how do we host an occasional Zoom like coffee, um, like an ambassador's coffee. So not a mandatory thing, but a time for ambassadors to come together. And there's one of us here or a couple of us here to maybe answer some questions, but really more about you all connecting with each other, because that's that's really where the meat and potatoes is. Um, so connecting with us is great because we have resources, but also to get a lot of projects done, you do need good partnerships um, with folks who are doing similar work. So I think that will that will be part of the puzzle is some get togethers, virtual get togethers since we're spread all over the state. I think we're in most of the counties. I don't, mm -hmm. I think Joel was working on that today, but we're we're like we're like 12 counties short. So we're we're still looking for those people in those couple of counties, but we're we're really spread all over the state at this point. So some virtual 
some drop-ins. And when you see these live um, webinars, even if you've already got some knowledge on that subject, if you just want to connect with folks, it's a great way to do that. Speaking of the coffees, um, I tried to join one of the coffees today and it said I had to be invited. Um, all right. That, that may have been a lunch and learn, um, lunch which and, is slightly okay. different. So the lunch and learns have so far only been for steering committee members. Um, but you and I could always have, since you're in my region, we could have a chat and you could possibly join a steering committee. Um, so that's something we can look at. But I think right now that's who those are for. Am I correct on that, Maggie? I feel like you are ahead of me as usual, Christina. The, um, oh, yeah, it's, a, this it's is on something, my website. I think it's called yeah, the yeah, co yeah. coffee thing. It's a sustainability coffee chat was the yeah. name of it. And um, it's separate from what Nick was just talking about with this, though confusingly similar. Um, and this one, as far as I know, is also new. So the one that was on our website is uh, hosted by the University of Minnesota's Office of Sustainability um, and one of our, Jennifer, our uh, Southeast CERT coordinator was one of the speakers, but we didn't actually host it. So I don't know much about it, to be honest. Um, so, uh, but confusingly similar. Okay. Well, I, I reached out to, yeah, I, I think I reached out to that Jennifer person because her uh, email was a link in there and I didn't hear back, but I tried to get in today and it's like, well, that looked like a really good conversation, but um so hopefully going forward, we'll be able to just like click that link in the little coffee shop thing and join. That would be great. And I had one thing I just wanted to throw out there for everybody. Um, in case you don't already know, next Monday at 1130, or excuse me, at noon, Minnesota is having their home energy rebate update webinar. That is super, Christina. Thank you so much. We actually on our website have um, that event and others. So we're so grateful whenever people add events on our website and you can, there in the chatters is the link to it. So we always love to hear about clean energy events going on in Minnesota. Thank you for mentioning that. And those rebates are tricky. So it'll be nice to have um, like a detailed update from the state. Um, do folks have any other questions, comments, conversation? Just real quick, Christina, the Jennifer Lindahl from Southeast who was on that coffee, she and Nick are counterparts. So the way we clean energy resource team search divides the whole state is um, geographically. And so Nick is in your region and Jennifer's in the Southeast, FYI. But it's, yeah, it's totally okay if you talk to one from a different region too, <laughs> so that's fine. That's the beauty of Zoom, <laughs> then you can so easily meet each other without driving for hours on end. Yeah. Well, um, it looks like there are a lot of really helpful links in chat um, where to sign up for the ambassador newsletter um, and, and lots of the things that we've talked about here. So you can check that out. I believe that this QR code brings you to the website for clean energy ambassadors. Um, hopefully I'm right because sometimes the QR codes change, but you've got the links all in chat and that's my email address. Feel free to send me a message, especially if you're in my region, but it's okay if you're not, um, I'll point you in the right direction to who to get in touch with. Um, but especially Christina, we can, um, we should definitely keep in touch um, as you move forward um, through your ambassadorship and, and just as you're working on projects with your org, um, I'd love to be a part of that. So thank you everybody for coming today. Anything anybody else would like to say before we move back on to our days? We do have a question, which is, are there any modes of communication that work best in Minnesota or have led to really good connections? It's a question from the chat. That was a great chat or a great question. So I will answer what I see first and then other people can jump in. Uh, in Duluth, especially, um, I work a lot with um, folks like Equilibrium 3, et cetera. Honestly, social media. So, I mean, it depends on what target you're, you're looking at, but um, LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, et cetera, especially Facebook when you're um, releasing information, um, you have, you know, you can add larger 
text than you can on somewhere like Instagram, but uh, we've had a lot of, um, of luck with that. And also um, in-person events are pretty popular in Duluth. I've been to a bunch through Sustainable Duluth. Um, I've actually spoken at a couple at Dovetail in Duluth, um, but other folks might have other thoughts um, about good, good methods of communication. When added in the chat, also the next door app, I recently was talking to someone who said it really varies by age as to which social media platforms we'll use. So um, maybe thinking about who you're trying to reach and what they use. Yeah, I learned this week at a conference in um, Minneapolis that the generation um, like younger than graduating from high school, so, you know, 18 and younger, really are, are using Discord more than say Snapchat, Facebook, TikTok, et cetera. And I feel like I'm cutting edge as a millennial because I use TikTok and most people my age don't. So apparently I'm already two forms of social media behind, but it's a great point. Haley also included in the track, uh, excuse me, in the chat, a link to a survey because we'd love to know what you thought of this. And another question, how long does it take to get through the six training to become an ambassador? Haley, maybe if it's okay, I'll, uh, there we go, I can answer that one. Yeah, I would say, so each training is about an hour long, um, give or take. There are some Q and A similar to this one at the end. Um, and then you'll take a little survey. So I would say each training is about an hour, so about six hours, and then a little extra for um, doing the surveys. So if you're really ambitious, you could become an ambassador in a day. Probably easier if you take them in chunks though, right? So. Um, and it looks like we might have something else in chat here. Oh, just thanks. Yeah, thank you, Corey. Thanks so much for joining. Um, there is a survey for um, feedback. So if you could all click that link and take that survey um, to give us feedback for this session, that would be, we'd really appreciate that. Um, like the whole point of this conversation, we want to make sure that it is two-way. So your feedback will help us um, inform further sessions in the future. And I'll just, um, with that, I will thank you all so much. Thanks to my fellow Circes uh, for all of your help answering people's questions. And thanks so much for taking time out of your day to join us today. And please become an ambassador. We'd love to be working with you. So thanks so much, everybody. Take care. Nick, can we ask one more quick question? Sorry. No, absolutely not. Yes, of course. <laughs> Question is, you don't have to be an ambassador to sign up for the newsletter, correct? And I know the answer to that one. That is correct. The more people who sign up for the newsletter, the merrier. And we're hoping that by learning about it, they will become ambassadors eventually. So please feel free to encourage others to sign up for that as well. Thanks so much for being here. See you next time. Bye, everybody. Take care. Thank you.